In today's video, I'm gonna show you the easiest ways to find the best rattle bait locations. And I'm gonna show you techniques to maximize your success. Right, here's the difference between the hard knocker and the one knocker. The one knocker has one sound chamber in it. One rattle, one BB. And the hard knocker has tons of BBs in it. So you can hear one has a very loud high pitch, one has a very low single thud sound. Here's the best way to go about it. If I pull into an area and I see a couple other guys fishing in there and they're all slinging rattle baits, I'm going to the one knocker because I want a sound that these bass aren't hearing. I want something different. So I'll throw the one knocker. Conversely, there's some techniques where I like the one knocker, which we're gonna get into later in the video. Now the hard knocker, traditionally, that's what I'm starting with. Unless fishing pressure dictates, and then I start switching it up. Usually I'm throwing both in conjunction with each other. If I'm in a tournament scenario and there's a guy in the back of the boat with me and he's throwing a rattle bait, I'm throwing the hard knocker because I know he's not throwing the same sound I am. It comes in two sizes. There's a half ounce and a quarter ounce. Now here's the cool thing. You should never, ever, ever overlook the quarter ounce. Traditionally, if I'm fishing shallower, I throw the quarter, or if I have to slow the bait way down, I'll throw the quarter, or if the bait fish are small, I'll throw the quarter. I have seen time and time again where the bass want the smaller bait and they won't touch anything else. So you have to mix it up because the bass will have a preference and they'll show you that preference. All right, now we're gonna get into locations. I'm gonna show you on the map what to look for. We're gonna start out with grass first because it's a little more complicated than on a structure like. Even though people think grass is easy, oh, see the grass, throw to the grass. No, we're gonna break it down. Let me get the maps. This is grass. Here's what we're gonna look for. First thing I wanna look for is flats. Nice big flats that come out. I wanna find gradual sloping banks. And then when I look at it, I'm gonna look for broken grass first because the broken grass is gonna give you lanes to throw between, etc. And the other thing we're gonna look at is funnel areas like this right here is a funnel area. We have a funnel area over here. Funnel areas are places where the grass will make a ditch and neck down and it, and it concentrates the bass in a very small area. These are very high percentage spots. The other thing we're gonna look for is hard bottom and shell beds. Now, it's real easy to say, oh, fish the shell beds, but I'm gonna show you a trick right now to make it easier for you to find them because they're not everywhere. So we have current coming in this system. You see the arrow, the current arrows coming in the system. First thing you need to understand, shells are filter feeders. They need current to survive because that's what brings them the food. So on the inside swings, current facing structural elements is usually where your shells are gonna start to pile up because the current will run over these swings like any over here and over here, the current runs over them and they can feed easily. The other place they go is high spots because here's what happens. As the water gets thinner coming over the high spot, the current speeds up over the top of it. It's a great way to bring food for them. So now you know you can look for shells on the high spots as well. And so that's how to tell the difference. Now we're gonna talk about retrieves for a second. Okay, so when I'm coming into like uh, deeper submerged grass, grass that's not to the top. It's, it's deeper grass. I'm gonna burn the bait or I'm gonna tick it off the tops of the deeper grass. So I'm gonna pick my lane between the clumps of grass. I'm gonna pick my lanes, throw it out there and reel it back in. And, and if I bump the grass, I'm gonna tear it through. So the bait goes, boom, it busts through that grass clump. That's a good way to trigger strikes. The other thing is hard bottom areas, such as rock or shell. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna let the bait bump into the rocks, bump into the shells. There's gonna be perimeter grass around this stuff. As soon as I make contact with that perimeter grass, I'm gonna snatch it again. Because remember, when I'm dragging it on the bottom, I'm gonna be kicking up a dust cloud. Very not unsimilar to crayfish and, and things like that. This is all how to get strikes with these things. Now, gradual sloping transitions like this, okay? What I'm gonna do here is, this is where I use what I call a yo-yo presentation. A lot of guys call it many different things, but I'm gonna cast the bait out, 
let it hit the bottom, start to reel it in, and I'm gonna lift it up. So the bait goes, and then I'm gonna let it fall again. And I'm gonna work it down that transition, or if I've got grass that's stair-step down, I'm gonna work it down that stair-step grass. Now basically, we got three types of retrieves. We burn it in and tick the tops, we rip and tear through the clumps in the lanes, and we do the yo-yo technique. That's kind of how I'm fishing grass. Now, let's get into some structure lakes because this is gonna be really fun. Okay, now, structure lakes. The first thing I'm gonna look for, especially early, early, early spring, I'm gonna look for main lake locations. And here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for long, rounded points. You see them here, long, rounded points with deep water access coming in. These are gonna be your first fish staging up in like February, early, early spring. Water temperature is still gonna be right around 39 to 42 degrees. The key thing here is you wanna key in on hard bottom. This is very, very important. Hard bottom, rock, gravel, shells, etc. Now, this is where I employ a technique called slow roll. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approach these, these flat rounded points. I'm gonna throw the bait out. I'm gonna fish it exactly like I would a Carolina rig, a football jig, or a wobble head. I'm gonna maintain constant bottom contact. So the bait is grinding the whole way, grinding on stones, grinding on rubble. You're gonna feel it do, 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 down there. It's doing its thing, okay? That is the best way to fish these, these gravelly rounded points because realistically, the only cover element that's gonna be on them is the stones themselves but there, this is a great spot. This actually, this spot right here, I wound up taking second in a regional on. That's why I pulled up this map because it's it has all the right stuff on it. Now, let's go into creeks. Creeks, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna show you the whole creek right here, the whole entire creek. I picked a creek and, and I picked the creek with the exact same mentality that I picked my main lake spots. I'm gonna look in this creek and I'm gonna see, does it have a lot of flat gravel rounded points? Does it have anything coming off the bank that's shallow? Like just connected to the main shore, but offshore that's shallow. I can, I can look at this map here and say, this is a good creek to start out at. So I break it up into three sections. The reason I'm doing this is because this, this is gonna give you a better understanding of where you need to be when. So the, this is the mouth of the creek. This is where the creek enters the main lake. This is the early spring, AKA 39 degree to 42 water temperature. This is the first spot these fish are gonna come in at. And you can see these structural elements here, all these rounded points and stuff here. These are gonna be what I'm looking at, okay? Now, the other thing about section one is this also is a late fall spot, late fall, early winter spot because as the temperatures cool, the bass will come out from the creek and they'll use this area. As the main lake warms, the fish will come into the creek and use area one. Now, as spring progresses and the water temperatures start to rise, these fish are gonna start to migrate and come into the section two of this creek arm. Again, it's got great structural elements, everything we're looking for, and then you remember in the fall, as the temperature starts to decrease, they're gonna start to move back out. So they're gonna also use this. So you see what I'm doing here. I'm giving you two times a year where this is applicable. And then of course, the third spot, which is late spring and fall. In fall, all the bait fish migrate back here, but in late spring, they're gonna spawn back here. And so you can move into the creeks as the fish move in, and you can move out of the creeks as the fish move out. That's pretty simple stuff. Some of the things you might encounter. Now, I just did this because I just, I wanna just show you. You're gonna look for, and you'll see gravel and rock points and stuff, and little banks with boulders on them. Maybe some stump rows in the shallow flats. You're just basically gonna key on any structural element and any cover on that structural element that's within range of these rattle baits. They're not hard to fish, they're insanely effective. 
You just got to get out there, pick the right places, and you're going to have great success with these things.